Hi, my name is Jay Mashalani and this is a quick video about the Pushing iOS project. So this is just a quick video to explain the Pushing iOS project, especially the block system. Uh, I still recommend that you read the whole thing uh, to really get all the insights and so on. Uh, so in the research, we focus on the market with three main criteria, applications, customization, and experience. Uh, again, I really recommend you go to the website and you look at the Venn diagram and it explains the whole thing. But right now, I just want to focus on the block system. So on the market, we have three main players, Android, Windows, and iOS. And a problem with customization and experience is that, well, iOS is kind of old. Um, Android has something great that is called a widget. So basically, you can customize them, add a lot of widgets, and you know they're like mini applications on your home screens how awesome that is uh, you can actually interact with them so you can click uh, well it's more of a tap uh, you can have buttons lists everything it's great but there's just one little problem with widgets is that um, they're not standard they don't have really a standard design uh, and some apps don't have them some apps are not as integrated, so it's more of a standardization, design, and integration problem. Yet, they're extremely powerful, very customizable, and even if they don't fit too much one of another, well, you have a mini app on your phone. How awesome is that? On the Windows side, we have the lifestyle. Now, the lifestyle is kind of the other side of a widget. Um, you can resize them. They're the application itself, so like compared to the widget, they're not separate. It's the application itself giving you information. Uh, that is great. You can have rich content, pictures, everything you want. There's only one problem that compared to the widget, well, you can't interact with them. So one, you can interact with them. Uh, they're very customizable. There's a lot of options. They're just not very standard. They're separate. They're not as integrated. And the other one, well, is very integrated. The, it's the application itself giving you information, but you can't interact with them. And then we have the iPhone with icons, which is basically you open the app. So that's, that's kind of the problem right now I'm seeing. Um, and yet iOS is successful, even if with customization and experience problem, uh, because it doesn't have anything for it. So if we move to understanding iOS, uh, why is iOS working right now? So some of you say, well, iOS is old, it's not organized, blah, blah, blah. And again, there's a full analysis about uh, the iOS 7 design, which is kind of a big subject. But in this uh, case for the block, why is iOS working? Well, it's because it's simple. That's the only real answer. Uh, it's simple on the buying process, it's simple on the support process, it's simple in the way it works. You click, you open the app, you go back, and that's it. So people buy iOS because it's simple, yet they leave iOS because it's simple. Here's the problem. So the good side is that it, it has always worked the same, right? You open the application, it opens. Press home, go back. Open another application, opens. Another application, go back. So on. So everybody's happy about iOS because it always worked the same. Yet people are leaving iOS because, well, it has always work the same. How the hell do we fix that? How the hell do we, do we try to, to fill that gap, right? People stay for that reason, yet that reason is also the, you know, why people are leaving. So we can't hook up anything on the, the interface and the way it works, the experience, yet we have to change that experience and make sure that, you know, they have more. So the problem here, I think, in terms of experience, is that with the widget and the lifestyle, you have, you know, a good solution, more interaction, yes, integ uh, less integration, uh, more integration, less interaction. Uh, so you don't need to open, close, open, close, open, close every application. And here comes the solution I'm proposing. So the solution, I think, would be something called an iOS block. A block would be very simple. Your home screen stays the same. It's just a bunch of icons like you have always used on iOS and you've always loved. The difference is that you can just take the icon, pinch it bigger, 
and you can have more information. If you pinch it back down, well, you're just basically peaking. So that's kind of a, a peak scenario. Yet, if you open the application and you leave it, well, it basically drops. It, it stays in iOS block. So I think this is a great solution because if you like iOS the way it is, it doesn't change. It's still a bunch of icons. You open, close every application and there's not even a single thing that is extra added on your home screens, options, whatever. It stays the same. Yet, if you kind of start to hate iOS because it's always the same, well, you're happy because you can just take your, your icon, put it bigger, and there you go. So you don't need eight taps to check what's your you know, last message, uh, what's for your day, your music, and what's the weather. Just transform them into blocks, and there you go. You can just quickly peek at them. The extra there is that compared to widgets and live styles, you basically have the best of both worlds. So remember, a widget, you can interact with it, but it's not very standard and separate from the application. A live style is great because it's the app itself, it's very integrated, but you can't do anything with it. The magic with the iOS block is that you have both of the best out of the widgets and the live tab. Kind of putting an Apple trick there. Uh, so you can actually interact with a block uh, in a minimal sense, uh, yet you can, you know, you can list, you can swipe, you can even have buttons. Uh, and there's a very strict design uh, standard kind to respect. It's all in the research. Uh, you can see that by yourself. But the advantage is that it's the app itself, yet you can interact with it. It's integrated. It works the same way, feels the same way. And again, if you don't like it, don't use it and you don't even know it's there. So if you like the way it always worked, well, nothing changes. If you want a little something more out of your iOS experience, you can. And it's basically the best out of the widget and the lifetime. So that's kind of it. It still stays simple and easy to use. And this is just a small explanation and preview of uh, the pushing iOS research I posted. This is the main solution, just a quick explanation out of it and you know have allergies and poor lighting yet you understood everything and that's what's important so you can go on my website jmashlani.com you can contact me on twitter which is at technofoo but foo in french f-o-u basically and you can of course go to facebook.com slash jmashlani for my facebook page where i post a lot of stuff actually i don't post a lot but what i post is relevant so that's what's important so thank you very much and I hope that you're gonna just take a coffee, a quick bagel, sit down and read 8,300 words of poor syntax that I wrote about this project. Uh, nonetheless, in case you're kind of lazy and I understand you, it's the internet. Well, at least you have a quick explanation of the iOS block. Have a great day. I just realized that I filmed this whole thing in one take. <laughs> Yay!